Yes, the name of the book is actually Reclaim Your Inner Goddess. Oh, there we go. I should learn how to read. So <laughs> we'll bounce back to Ali. Ali, tell us your thoughts about this whole book and adventure. I can't wait till one day I get it in my hand. Tell us all about it, Ali. Yeah, look, we came up with a name and the reason we structured the book was there were seven women and we all jumped on a networking call, much like um, the ones that you run. And one of them had an amazing clever idea that we should write a book together so there became you know the the interesting idea that we because we're all such amazing coaches in our own field our own sort of niche that we would put in you know some of our life experience some of the lessons that we could teach other people into this amazing book and because there were seven of us we a lot of us look into sort of empowerment, women empowerment. So that's sort of how we came up with the book, uh, the book name Reclaim Your Inner Goddess because we believe every woman can be this beautiful, inner, strong, empowered woman. And so most of the chapters are based on the seven chakras. So for those that don't know what each uh, what the chakras are, they're like energy centers and they all correspond to a part of the body and correspond to both an energetic, Uh, psychological spiritual energy and so all of us authors was focused on specific uh chakras mine was the solar plexus so yeah we just gave our experience gave our you know uh, our tips our practical tips on how any woman can take all the advanced sort of um skills of all seven women combined and learn how to really tap into that inner goddess so a lot of practical tips to really be this empowered, amazing woman that we can be. Wow. Wow. That's just incredible. And uh, Ingrid, I'd love to hear your reactions. Ingrid, what do you think? Um, yeah, I'm very, very blessed. I'm the um, last piece of the puzzle for this book. <laughs> so I'm, I feel very, very blessed and very honored to be requested to join this group um, and create a book together. So yeah, we're, we're, we have gave birth of our baby, Kindle, Kindle baby first, and then hard copy, so I can't wait. And um, I actually wrote the sacral chakra, uh, which is the chakra be- before Ellie. And it's about, you know, emotions, creativity, sensuality. And I would love to uh, bring more pleasure, yeah, and more joy to um, ladies, Uh, couples especially because I'm a relationship coach so I deal a lot with couples and you know ladies in the relationship whenever they steer away um, they get distracted because of uh, maybe feeling shameful about something feeling guilty about something uh, too busy feeling stuck in their creativity giving practical tips on how to get back to reclaim their inner goddess because they already have it They already have it inside of themselves. They just forget sometimes, you know, we're forgetful human beings. We just need a gentle reminder to bring back to center. Yes. And we share a lot of tips in this book. Oh, well said. And just to let you know, um, we have one of our authors uh, coming in. She's an amazing, dangerous lady from uh, Brisbane. She's dangerous. She's legendary. It's wonderful, Linda. Can we give a big, wonderful wave to Linda? Linda, I don't know if you can, feel free to unmute and... uh, Say a quick hello. Hello. I finally made it. I'm, um, I can only jump on for 10 minutes, but good to be here and um, share. So, yeah, thank you. Thank, oh. Thanks for hosting this, Edward. Oh, it's a pleasure. It is being recorded. What we'll do is we'll bounce to Ali and then we'll bounce back to you, Linda, knowing you have to go. So we'll bounce back to you, Ali. Ali, what are your thoughts and reactions to what Ingrid says and the dangerous uh, amazingness of Linda? What do you think about dangerous, amazing Linda? Yeah, Linda's awesome. Like, yeah, she's she's great. Like, she's written a book herself with 25 authors in, a, in America. So mm-hmm. she had an even bigger project. Like, we thought working with seven was um, <laughs> difficult, but she... She had her own book with 25 co-authors, so I can so Linda can quickly mention about that for a minute. Um, so she's written books. So a few of the girls in our group have had the experience of written, writing a book in the past. Linda, let's yes. uh, let's bounce over. Let's get a bit of time with you, Linda, knowing you have to go. Please tell us everything, Linda. We want to hear it. Uh-huh. Okay. So uh, 
Yes. Uh, this time last year, we launched our other book anthology and it was part of um, a group in America because I lived in California for seven years. Um, yeah, we and I travel back and forth. Well, I used to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Planning yeah. on going back um, the end of this year. Anyway, so it was with some of the ladies that I know, and there was 25 of us. Um, the name of the book is Empowered Self-Care, Healing Mind, Body, Spirit. And and so in then here in Australia, when um, I met Ali and we all came together, there's seven of us and it was a spontaneous, oh, let's write a book together and let's do this together. And uh, so it was a co-creation of uh, collaboration and our putting our ideas and energy together. And it's been a wonderful project to work on together. And um, so exciting to actually see it actually birthed and the hard copy is coming out this month. So very exciting. Um, and it was wonderful, you know, when the Kindle came out. So, yeah, we each wrote about uh, the chakras. And uh, so how much do you want me to say? <laughs> well, what I actually want to ask you, Linda, um, uh, bearing that in mind, and, I, again, it's interesting because I love it because, reclaim your inner goddess right and and for some reason i keep saying the word goodness i mean the word goddess but i keep saying the word goodness because mm -hmm. i suppose in my male mind to me it's about the goodness of the goddess that's the way i kind of see it i kind of see these two terms in twine tell us what you mean by goddess i love that I, especially as a man who knows nothing about birth and that sort of thing i love this goddess concept tell us more about it so it's really about balancing the masculine and the feminine and and also with women leaders in the world and especially there's a lot of women uh, business owners, it's the problem is people or these women will fall into more of their masculine and be pushing and driving and um, and, and that will eventually lead to you know burnout and other things so it's about really balancing the femininity and that's where the reclaim your goddess comes in but it's also about nurturing and nourishing you know ourselves as as women because we're natural nurturers for everyone else, you know, nurturing like if you've got children or family or or a caregiver and then and so the roles that a woman plays is so vast and so it's about really um, reclaiming your inner goddess and doing your own self-care to keep your energy vibration high um, and nurture yourself and then fill your cup up first and then you your overflow can go out to others. So that's in a nutshell. I hope that answered the question. Oh, brilliant. Well, let's get some reactions from Ingrid and Ali. We'll start with Ingrid, then we'll bounce back to Ali. Ingrid, what are your reactions to Legendary Linda? And love you to add to it, uh, Ingrid. Absolutely. Even though in our mind we wrote it for uh, women for the goddesses. However, as a relationship I, uh, coach, I can see this will play really well to men because men is the other half of the equation, mm -hmm. right? Typically. Uh, and sometimes they are rather clueless and by... <laughs> Sorry, no pun intended. Uh, um, and, you're you're and just telling the truth. <laughs> yes. And by reading this book, you actually learn how to understand women better. So if you want to know what women want, read this book, men. <laughs> now, now, now you're selling it to the men. So, um, and I'll tell you now, speaking on behalf of all men on planet Earth, we are, when it comes to women, we're clueless and we don't know what we're talking about. Um, so speaking of the opposite of someone who doesn't know what they're talking about, let's bounce over to Ali Wang for a thoughts and reaction. Ali, what do you think, my friend? Oh, yes, I agree with Ingrid too. We can definitely, you know, the men can definitely read the book and they can also touch into their feminine side. So a lot of the time, you know, men have to be really masculine and then that's it, right? So we need a sort of combination. Men can also have this beautiful feminine energy as well, right? So 
and women can have this strong masculine energy. So it doesn't always have to be that it's got to be one way. So I think that's a really important point that Ingrid made is that definitely it can relate to men, but in general, men can really get in touch with that sensitive feminine side as well, which is what women love to see a lot of the time. Yeah, we love the masculinity, but sometimes we need just that sensitive touch, that sort of, you know, understanding at a, at a deeper level as well. Oh, yes, brilliant. we love men to be more vulnerable. We absolutely <laughs> love burn, vulnerable men because sometimes men's just like, oh, you know, gotta be a man and not being. A- <laughs> my daughter's right. Don't want to be like, vulnerable because we're a man. Gotta be a man. <laughs> my daughter left her bunny on the table. I just realized. So what an appropriate prop for that conversation. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Very sweet. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to bounce back to Linda on that one. So Linda and I, um, again, we've got to keep the details confidential here. Linda and I are having a confidential <laughs> chat about some certain people. And um, we're talking a lot about feminine and uh, masculine energy. And I was telling Linda to go fully masculine on this one. And <laughs> Linda's pushback saying, no, I want to remain feminine. And I said, yeah, but just pull out a katana and use it or something. I made some comment like that. <laughs> Tell us more about this whole masculine feminine thing, which I have no idea on, Linda. Tell us more about it. <laughs> so it's really about taking charge in your life. And, and so when you make certain decisions and really stepping into your power a, as a woman and, and just really taking control. Um, and so that, is more of the masculine but you know this is where we need to actually balance it uh, with the, the femininity and come across from a place of you know love and compassion and empathy and do it in a um a caring way so that um we're not upsetting you know a whole bunch of people so um that that's my my take can I, on. Can I, do I have permission to disagree? Like with that, can I disagree with you slightly? Is that okay, Linda? Can I okay. disagree? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I spiritually agree with what you're saying. However, in terms of detail, maybe this is me being a completely, it's probably more me being an out-of-touch masculine guy. But mm-hmm. when someone messes with you, shouldn't you really show them the inner tiger and give them a hard time? What's your take on that one? Because we show compassion to your enemies, they'll just walk all over you, won't they, Linda? Not necessarily. Yeah, we did speak about this. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and though I, my take is to, you put me on the spot. I know, and, it's my job. It's my job to put you on the spot. <laughs> but I'm only putting you on the spot because you're brilliant and you know a lot more than I do. <laughs> so when when you make a decision it has to feel good and feel strong within your being um, and that really ties into being your true authentic self so if something doesn't feel right um and and so here's, here's a metaphor when and, and I'll, I'll just, you know, divulge a little bit. I was going to prolong a decision by the end of this month. And then it was like, why wait until the end of the month? You know, it's like ripping off the Band-Aid, right? And so if you've got an infection, why prolong it for X amount of time, pull the pin now, and then you're free to stop that energy drain and you can then put energy into all the things that you want to put your energy into and co-create and um and it's all positive and you know because while you're holding on to a decision that you need to make um well then yeah it's just prolonging it's just dragging it out and it's actually draining on your energy um and that that can be for men or women yeah. So it's like once once you've made the decision and it doesn't feel good, you know, to stay, well then, yeah, um, just pull the pin and just move on with your life and be done with it. I like it. So that's the hence the balance of the masculine and feminine. The feminine is more the feeling side of it and the masculine mm-hmm. side is more throwing the brick through the window. I like it. 
Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, well said. We, we love you, Linda. Round of applause to Linda. That was a great answer. I did put you on the spot. I, I only do that because I love you, Linda. That's why. And um, <laughs> so we've got, I just want to bounce over before we bounce back to Ingrid and Ali. We've got the amazing Stell who's joined us. Stell's one of the co authors. Yay. And I was actually had my first chat with Stell on the phone yesterday. So Stell, please feel free to unmute and say hello. We're so honored to have you with us. Hello, thank you for, for having me. I'm sorry I'm a bit late, but I, <laughs> um, yeah, well, I'm not sure what the discussion is around at the moment, but congratulations. Uh, I'm guessing we're celebrating Ellie for um, her all book about, launch all and of all of our book launch. <laughs> we had so much fun uh, collaborating and connecting. Um, yeah, I just think we've, we've come together and built a sisterhood uh, for life through creating this beautiful book together. I oh, know. And, and Stella, I just want to ask you, Stella, what was the big idea that you shared in the book? What really leaped out to you and what did you want to really share with the world and especially to help women reclaim their inner goddess? What really came out for you? Yeah, so um, I really talked about your relationship with your body and how we kind of distract ourselves nowadays with um, comparison and judgment and how that creates a, a disconnect in, in our bodies, uh, especially as women, but men as well. It's not, it's not just a, 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 a gender thing. Uh, but yeah, so the, the uh, focus of the book was actually called The Sacred Body Awakening, uh, which is just reforming that relationship with your body so that you can move on, feel safe in the body, um, so that you can co-create and be healthy and pursue your dreams and be spiritual. Uh, if you don't feel safe, you'll never really, um, you know, feel comfortable in your other energy centers as well. Oh, absolutely. Well said, Stel. Round of applause to you, Stel. Absolutely love it. <laughs> And let's bounce back to Ingrid and then wonderful Ali for some additional thoughts and reactions. Ingrid, the floor is yours. What are your reactions? And I'd love to and hear what I'm you think. Sorry, oh. I'll just say goodbye oh. before. Yeah, I've before got. Before you go, Linda, what's your closing yeah. thought, Linda? Before we let you go, give us a closing thought before we let you go. Closing thought on um, well, you need to buy the book in yeah, order there you go. to find, a... find out what all the secrets are and all the secret tips and tools and techniques and in order to reclaim your inner goddess and to stay tuned because we have more to come we're going to be doing live events live retreats and summits so um, if you're not in the facebook group make sure to join it and and just stay connected with us because um, this is the beginning of many exciting adventures ahead so Linda. okay Thank you so much. We'll leave you to I'll see you in Brisbane in a few weeks, Linda. Thank you. Yes, look forward to it. Have a great weekend, great everyone. Bye, Linda. Okay, bye. Bye. Yeah, we love you, Linda. Thanks. There we go. You heard it from Linda Joy Ben. He has to uh, run off and raise some more hell. So we're going to bounce back to Ingrid Galloway, Ali, and then back to Stell. Um, so, Ingrid, I'd um, love to hear your thoughts and reactions on everything you've heard, plus what else you'd love to share. Uh, yeah, I love reading Stella's um, chapter because really um, she starts with the root chakra. So uh, she tried to ground everyone uh, definitely. And it's really important to have your foundation right. If you want to build a house, uh, I'm not a builder <laughs> by trade. I'm a therapist. And um, uh, you need to get the foundation right. Strong foundation. Bye, Masatoshi. Thank you for coming. Love you, Masatoshi. True man. Yeah. So by getting your root um, steady and strong, then you can build the healthy foundation for the rest of the house, you know, uh, level one, level two, level three, you know, so you become the tower and you, uh, you can shine in uh, your own community and to the rest of the world. So it's really um, important to build your foundation right. And a lot of women, especially, we feel ashamed about our body. And uh, therefore, they continue on to the sacral chakra, which is about relationship and emotions and creativity. No wonder a lot of women feel uh, not confident enough to go out there and get the right partner that they, uh, they deserve because they feel guilty or shameful about something. 
Yeah. So it's very important to get your foundation right. And and also, too, I know this is a bit of a broad topic, but I'm sure you'd agree is, and I've never liked this as well. Even I'm a guy, I'm not liking this. I've never liked the unfair expectations that have been placed on women. You know, you have this artificially manufactured standard that women have to basically look like Barbie dolls. And I don't know, it's just, um, I think it's very manipulative and very sexist and very anti-women, but it's just such this view out there. And I think a lot of women will subconsciously take it on saying, well, I don't look like, you know, the so-called beauty standard I see in the, on the media all the time. Therefore, why would anyone want me? Is that sort of, am I reading that correctly, Ingrid, or do you think I'm miles off track there? No. Oh, you're right. Very good question. Yeah. What do you think of that topic, Ingrid, while I've got you? What do you think of that whole topic that I'm talking about? Like, we're just, I want to get your quick thoughts on that one before we bounce over to Legendary Alley. Right. Um, we encourage ladies to be authentic to themselves, who they are, and accept themselves for who they are. You know, yes, media can portray, you know, oh, Kim Kardashian is so beautiful. Yeah. So they say, <laughs> so they say, but yeah. you know, not every man actually like that sort of look. So uh, yeah, I don't. You are, you yeah, know, I'm not because, into that. <laughs> no. Everybody else is taken. So be be yourself because everyone else is taken. So there you go. Off to, oh. off to you, Ellie. Oh, here. Well said. Ali, over to you, my friend. We love you, Ali. Great job, Ingrid. Yeah, look, I think it's really important that we are authentic to ourselves, that we are in our own alignment. We're on our own path, right? And we have to be ourselves. Like we have to care for other people around us, but we also have to just be in touch with our own feelings and just be aware of everyone else's feelings around us, right? So not to pretend to be someone we're not. Um, You know, if we need to say something or, you know, someone's saying something hurtful to us, a lot of people hold back I find that communication is really important as well we need to be able to communicate if we ourselves are hurt or if someone has said something that's hurtful to us I find that a lot of clients that I see that can actually build up with some sort of chronic disease later if you're holding everything in you know when the energy gets blocked as an energy healer when you're not letting it out and you want to say something or some people are too afraid to say what they it's really on their mind right they hold it in that can actually create disease. It can create things like cancer or chronic illness because the energy literally gets blocked. You know, they have issues with their thyroid. So just to to make this point clear, so you're saying by us hanging on to like negative stresses and emotions, that can lead to serious diseases like cancer. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it can do. And also just holding on to thoughts, like if you have something to say, right, not just even negative emotions, but if you always want to say your uh, say what you're thinking or you want to be able to voice your opinion but you hold back because you're afraid of hurting others actually in the end you're hurting yourself right you're actually you're actually creating your own disease because you're holding on to what doesn't serve you so yeah there's, it's actually creating negative energy building up in the body and it can create chronic illness so as one of the things it's just you've got to make sure you are you know aware of your own feelings aware of those feelings of people around you and be able to voice it in a way that is actually helpful for yourself and helpful for those so so people are able to hear what your true feelings are what your true thoughts are so don't hold everything in like people think that people are mind readers even in a relationship with man and wife you know you think you know your husband we can't actually mind read you know it's all about communicating but communicating in a really thoughtful you know way and also in a very positive way that you can communicate what you're feeling so that the other person doesn't get hurt or doesn't you know feel negative about it but you need to be able to communicate what you're feeling deep down with the person um you know whether it be your family your partner in a way that is actually productive for for everyone instead of keeping it in well, it's very well said. I have this interesting thought, and um, I, I think you're all going to rightfully shoot me down on this one. I think Ingrid's going to throw a lamp at me, and Stel won't be a complete thought. But I have this, maybe this is my Persian male Arabic interpretation of things, but I kind of feel like to become more feminine, you need to be a little bit masculine. You've got to be a bit masculine to change things and make things happen to create the space to be more feminine. Is that a completely sexist, incorrect view that I'm holding, Ali, <laughs> and everyone? to be balanced there's a time when you need to step up and be in your masculine energy right so if you're at work if you're in a business setting and you need to take charge so that taking charge is more of that masculine energy right there's a time and place where you put more of that masculine energy in but if you need to be at home and be that beautiful loving housewife or a mother you know who's got you know maybe some you know dealing with a sensitive 
situation with the kids, you've got to put on your feminine touch, right? Mm-hmm. So usually, you know, I learned that when you leave business, like as an entrepreneur and a business owner, I can be more masculine at work. As a practitioner, I'm on more the masculine side because I'm teaching. I'm in a more of a position of, of teaching, right? But when I come home, you can be also in a more of a feminine a feminine position, say, you know, when you're talking to your children or something. So it it changes. It can it can shift and change throughout the day. It's not always that you've always got to remain in this energy, right? It's depending on the person, depending on the situation. If a client needs you to be more feminine, really sensitive, but if you need to give them some good advice and they're not doing something that is serving them in terms of their health, right? So if a client is, you know, taking on a bad habit, then I might step into a bit more of a masculine authoritative energy and say look this isn't great this will be the consequences if you go down you know this health path so I think there's changes and you've got to be able to step move in and out of this sort of masculine feminine energy what we call yin and yang right so to be able to move and shift when you feel that that's um yeah when you feel it's necessary when you feel that it's appropriate to touch to be more in that sensitive sort of role or to be in that more authoritative you know sort of um role as well so yeah, it needs to shift. It's not just always you've got to be masculine. Just because you're a man, you've always got to be masculine. If you're feminine, you've always got to be in that feminine energy, right? It's got to be a little bit of up and down um, when you feel like, yeah, it'll help the people around you. So stepping in and out, it's, it's yeah. Some people are always in the feminine energy, and I think that, you know, they could learn for some certain occasions to step into a bit more of that masculine energy. Well, very nice. And i got to say, obviously, I am being a bit of a hustle here. Um, I understand that well. You've got to constantly flick between the feminine and masculine energy to win big and uh ingrid something on your mind ingrid absolutely so it's kind of like a dance between the feminine (laughs) and masculine energy well said yes if you keep left 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 you will hit a wall you gotta (laughs) alternate between left and right left and right so it's a nice good dance right so uh, there you go being uh being a little bit uh being in touch with your feminine side doesn't make you a man become camp no you just become more balanced <laughs> so there you go just like a dance well, well before we bounce over to Stella we're gonna Stella we're gonna give you lots of air time because you've been waiting so patiently and um, we're gonna give you lots of air time interestingly um, a lot of people say this whenever I run an event I sort of crank up the feminine energy basically I'm like hi everyone welcome to our meetup so it's like, I don't know what it is, but whenever I turn up the feminine energy, I seem to be the best showman. So it's, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Couldn't agree with you more. There you go. There you go. Now, we, we have not let Paul Stell had a chance to speak, and you can blame me for that. So that's completely my fault. So I'm going to apologise to Stell, and we're going to give Stell the floor. Now, Stell, thank you for being so patient, and I just want to hear your thoughts and reactions, and so honoured to have you with us. Okay, well, um Yep, I completely agreed with the the masculine and feminine energy. I talk about that a a lot. Um, You know, I think we do um, kind of put those expectations on ourselves that we have to be a specific way. And um, and unfortunately, we are very masculine in today's society. You know, it's chasing goals. It's being this. It's, you know, and unfortunately, that does leave a lot of, um, burnout and stress and anxiety and again that takes us back to to the you know serious consequences like Ellie was talking about the disease the emotional stuff that happens because we don't have time to process that we you know we, we just go 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 and there's no time to rest which is is <laughs> not always great <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, I couldn't agree with you more the thing I was uh, really interested in digging in and really exploring Stell is that yeah, I get it. Like, you know, society, um, I've actually said a few things, which I, I know in this context, you ladies would agree with me that, you know, I often said this in a lot of interviews, society hates weak men. And this is one of the contradictions I see a lot is we need men to be more sensitive. We love it when men cry. But the moment a man does that, men and women will then condemn that character for being weak. Right. And it's a constant contradiction we see on a daily basis. We need men to be more sensitive. The moment they are, they just get slapped down by everyone. I'd love you to unpack that one a bit more, Stell. What are your thoughts on that whole topic? And I'd just love to hear your commentary on this one. Yeah, I think it's it's a definite expectation. Um, and it, it does leave, um, you, you know, just an unbalance from, from a male perspective as well. Because, 
you know, who are we to say whether, you know, crying is good or bad, you know? I think it's it's good to to express how you feel. And the more we can do that openly and with trust, we we won't have outbursts. Like, you know, it will just be in a genuine way before it gets to the outburst. And I think, I mean, my husband is, you know, he's a very man's man, but, you know, he's also sensitive and um, he's not afraid to show that side. And a lot of my friends actually respect that out of him. It's not like he cries, but like, you know, he, you know, um, he'll do stuff with just the girls and be comfortable with that. And, you know, like he's, there's a few times where he has shed some tears, you know, like when appropriate and everyone's like, wow, like, <laughs> Um, so I think we need to just start being honest with how we feel and be sensitive if you're sensitive and show that sensitive side because there's there's merit in what people say. They want to have want to see people more sensitive, but if you um, you need to do it in a in a controlled manner, I guess. You know, if you're melodramatically bursting into tears, no one appreciates that, whether you're male or female. <laughs> so yeah. I like what you said then, and I think that's maybe where I suppose a lot of the confusion is, is that, you know, often when, you know, especially men, for example, they express their sensitivity, sometimes they get shot down, and I think you're right, they're not expressing it in a great way. And I suppose I'll ask you this question. I'll ask, I'll ask, I'll ask it in a gendered fashion before we bounce back to Ingrid <laughs> and Ali for their thoughts. If you're female and you're highly masculine and you want to really unlock in that inner goddess, what would you say for a really imbalanced lady? What would you say to them? I, I think the, the first thing is to let go of your expe high expectations because you, if you are in that ma masculine, the first thing you probably, um, you're probably over analytical, you're probably in a space of um, constantly competing with yourself mostly so letting your guard down a little bit embracing mistakes um or just embracing who you are instead of always trying to to be better and do better uh, with that comes slowing down i guess um and take you know take some time clear clear your schedule first of all um of some of those those things that you know keep you in the masculine um yeah, so I think that's the first place that I would start. I don't know. What do you ladies think? <laughs> Before we go to them, I want to ask the other one. What would you say to a highly feminine, imbalanced man? What would you say to him? What would you say to him? <laughs> um, wow. It's not often that you experience that. But I, I guess, you know, just... Um, it's okay to take charge and to express your feelings. Um, and it's okay also not to express your feelings. So <laughs> either way is fine. Um, yeah. Oh, well said. And, and I know I'm throwing difficult questions. Say, so don't you worry. I, um, I, I uh, put a bit of pressure on Ingrid as well. Can we get a round of applause to Stel? Stel, absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. We'll give you a break before I beat you over the head again. We'll bounce back to Ingrid. Ingrid Moore beats me over the head, so that's where things change. Ingrid, beat me over the head. Please tell me why I'm wrong and why Stell is awesome and tell us why Ali's awesome too. And what are you thinking? <laughs> I'm not going to say that you are wrong because uh, everyone is learning. And um, the topic of vulnerability, we've been uh, um, talking about, you know, men being uh, sensitive and they being shut down by society per se. Um, I say, you know, that's part of the overactive symptom of unbalanced sacral chakra is feeling overly emotional. So uh, my tips will be have a, buy our book, number one. Yeah, and number yeah, two. Yeah, buy the book. <laughs> buy the book. And yes. Someone's going to send me the link. Someone send me the booking link too. Someone send me the booking link after this. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, number two, go to my chapter. You know, um, It's called Celebrate Your Love by Balancing Your Sacral Chakra. And you will see the list of you know, underactive symptoms of unbalanced sacral chakra overactive symptoms of unbalanced sacral chakra. So by being aware, 
So you can pinpoint, oh yeah, I can relate to this symptom. Oh, I can relate to that symptom. So by having a list, I'm an overly practical person, very practical. Therefore, I list it there. You can just check it. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is me. Oh, yeah, this is me. Then you can see, all right, I am imbalanced in a certain area. And then you can follow the tips of the, you know, five, seven, nine steps on how to rebalance yourself. So um, lots of tips within the book for different um, chakra there is that you can heal yourself with. Um, yeah. Oh, absolutely brilliant. Well said. And um, I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. Isn't Stell an amazing leader, Ingrid? I love some of Stell's point. What are some of your other reactions to what Stell was saying, Ingrid? Love to hear your thoughts there. I agree what she, uh, with what she said. And again, in the vulnerability uh, sense, you don't have to be vulnerable to everybody. So when you you feel you you being in tune with your own intuition, you can feel the vibe of the room. For example, you are in uh, the room with a lot of people. When you feel that someone actually lifts you up and you can be more more vulnerable with that person, that person will not shut, shut you off, shut you down. Even with family member, I wrote this in my chapter, even with family member, if they bring, they keep bringing you down, you don't have to be vulnerable to them, even if they are family members. So there you go. You have the power, you have the choice to be vulnerable when you see it fit. Oh, I love it. That is really taking back your power. And hence, um, I don't think you're just unlocking the inner goddess. You're helping me unlock my God right now. So there you go. <laughs> Whilst you mean this in a very gendered sense, I'm getting a great message out of what you're saying. We love you, Ingrid. Speaking of love, we're going to bounce back to Ali. Ali, you've been so patient. And that was you. a good title. That was a good title. And we should have changed it to that, girls. Reclaim your inner goddess and God. <laughs> no, no, stick with women. Stick with women. Us men suck too much. I think you no, women are no, evil. A book for the boys, the next uh -huh, one. Yeah, there you go. Good idea. Yeah, book for the boys. There we go. Drink beer. Yeah, no, no, don't do that. Um, Ali, please, the floor is yours. Love to hear your thoughts and reactions to wonderful Stell, Ingrid, and whatever's on your mind. Yeah, no, I think it's really true. Like, you know, people think there's this whole stereotype that men can't cry, you know, you know, at that there can't be the sensitive soul. I think that's really changed over the years. You know, I think that people are now really starting to see that, yeah, they do want to see feminine side. They do want to see sensitivity. It doesn't mean that we all have to be the stereotype that women have to stay at home, work from home. They can't work. You know, that's all very old thinking now, right? So mm -hmm. we do have to go through just being ourselves, whether you are, like you said, um, the more, on the, even if you're a man, you could be more on the sensitive, you know, the sensitive side. That's fine. You know, you've got to be who you are. And, but when there's a time and place for you to, to maybe speak your truth, like I was saying before, if there is a time that you do need to voice your opinion to speak your truth, not to hold back because you afraid of hurting someone else because in the end you're hurting yourself so I think just you know the whole point the whole book is that if we can go through and balance ourselves with all the different tips through all the different chapters we will feel more aligned within our you know our mind body and spirit and that's the thing when we can feel really aligned and just going back to if people don't understand what the chakras are they're all energy centers and the first four emotion the first four um chakras uh, from crown chakra to, to we've got crown chakra, third eye, we've got the throat and the heart. They're all mainly emotional based, right? So they're all really deep emotions. And the last three are more the physical chakras. But when they're all out of alignment, you're going to get imbalances in both your emotional and your physical body. So when everything aligns up, you're going to feel really just more at peace within your body, mind and spirit. You're going to have healthier um, health outcomes. You're going to be less um, you know, less problems with your health, as well as you're just going to be happier when everything's aligning up. But when someone comes in for a treatment, I always check which chakras are out of balance. And we actually do a treatment around balancing that. So then when they leave, all their chakras are in balance. So when you actually have everything in balance, you just feel really, you know, you feel very light, you feel very peaceful, you feel very happy, you feel very balanced. And that's what we want in life. We want to have that balance instead of walking around feeling not quite right here or there, right? Or just feeling, you know, like some part is out. So when everything is aligning up, we just feel that beautiful, zen, peaceful, harmonious alignment within ourselves. Oh, 
Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Well said, Ali. We love your work. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move to the final round of discussion. And um, basically, I'm gonna, we're going to go to Stel, Ingrid, and Ali. And uh, basically, want to hear any final thoughts. And I want to ask the question of why should you buy this book? So be it you're probably listening to the recording of this some time from now. Be it you're watching the recording now. Why should you buy this book and what will you get out of it? So we're going to bounce over to Stel. Stel, firstly, thank you for being so patient. I just love to hear some of your closing thoughts. What's on your mind? Well, um, are we talking about now why you should buy the book? Or I'll come back to that. No, <laughs> uh, we'll come back to why you should buy the book in a second. I just want to hear your closing <laughs> thoughts first. <laughs> I, I really like what Ellie said about finding balance and, um, you know, during the day, most of our chakras will probably like be slightly out of balance, but if we can keep them kind of controlled and in center, like, you know, that will just help us function better um, in the long run. You know, it's the same with like your, your mind and your body. Um, if you kind of let your mind run, a muck, then unfortunately, you know, you're going to feel disconnected to your body or, you know, sometimes we start getting a lot of stress because there's that imbalance from that perspective. So the same thing when it comes to our energy centers, um, it's the kind of just knowing um, when something is out of balance and then looking after that part of, um, part of ourselves. And I think it all comes down to self-care, you know, um, we all want to succeed in life and we all want to be healthy individuals. Um, and self-care is just about really paying attention to what's going on for you and then making choices that will help you feel better. Oh, brilliantly well said and thank you. And, of course, the uh, final follow-up question is to anyone listening, or listening to this recording, whenever that is, <laughs> why, in a sentence, why should they buy the book right now? Why should they buy the book? <laughs> It will change your life. <laughs> it will absolutely just help you just uh, reconnect with yourself in a very, very different way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I could not word it better than that. Can we give a round of applause to Stel? Stel, we just want to say thank you. Know you're a busy lady and appreciate having you with us. Oh, thank you for, for having me. <laughs> thank you, Stel. Excellent. Now, big thank you, Stel. We're going to bounce over to wonderful Ingrid, then finish up with Ali. Ingrid, just want to bounce over to you. And before I ask you why, buy this book now i just love to hear your reactions and closing thoughts ingrid uh closing thoughts i was thinking about something and then i forgot right i may be in balance <laughs> oh, I, no, 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 just on that note there is no one more in balance in this world than i am i am the king of imbalance no one's more in balance than me yeah but truly um i love this book simply because it's a simple reminder that we can get out of balance and that's okay. That's life. We're busy, committed, uh, be responsible about this and that. Um, sometimes it's just nice to have a practical, a practical reminder on how to uh, bring balance into your life. So that's my closing thought. Excellent. And I know you already answered, but I'm going to re-ask the question anyway. Why should anyone listening buy the book right now? What are they going to get out of it? Uh, practical tips. So you don't have to guess, uh, second guess, uh, am I doing this right? Am I not doing this right? Um, everything's on the book. It's very practical. And I love the practicality of our expertise combined. Oh my God. Well said. Round of applause to you, Ingrid Galloway. And um, I just want to say, really appreciate you and big thank you. Thank you. And we're going to finish up this wonderful interview of wonderful Ali Huang. And I've known Ali for many years. Ali, before I ask you on why people should buy the book right now, I'd just love to hear your reactions to Stel, Ingrid, and any closing thoughts you'd love to share. Yeah, look, I think it was just an amazing project. You know, I loved, always wanted to write this beautiful book and just put in some of the practical tips um, that I've built up or, you know, all my expertise, you know, being in the health profession for 12 years, it's been amazing to be able to put some of that down for to be able to share that with people and, and so yeah I think you know it's really important that we do look after our health we stay in alignment especially now more than ever you know we're so disconnected from ourselves and from people around us you know with the pandemic you know we've lost touch with a lot of people you know the best thing is like social media but that's not really enough as you know people are kept apart from family and friends 
And so I think the best thing is we have to start with our own self, work on ourselves first, and then hopefully be able to share all that love with other people around us, especially our own families. And yeah, I think it's just really important now. It makes you realize, you know, how important just the love and connection with ourselves and with other people are in this day and age. So yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Ah, oh, brilliant. And of course, the final question, the most, perhaps the most important question of all, why should people watching this recording buy the book right now and what will they get out of it? Yeah, so I think you will definitely get some amazing practical tips. You know, if you really want to live that healthy uh, life that is, you know, aligned and you can really be that beautiful, empowered person, be it a man or a woman, then, yeah, you'll get some amazing tips on especially health tips, um, emotional, you know, spiritual alignment tips on just how we can really feel connected with ourselves. We can be in alignment. We can feel happy, content and healthier and live longer by realigning all our chakras and keeping them in alignment for as long as we can. So we're always going to be out of balance, like Stel said. We're always, I see people out of alignment, you know, within a few minutes you could get into a fight and you could throw one of the chakras out. Or you could have some bad food and you could throw, you know, your solar plexus out. But it's about keeping it in alignment long-term, both emotionally uh, and physically over, the, over, you know, your lifetime and to have, you know, have those practical tips. So if you realise, oh, okay, I'm not speaking my truth, you know, say on throat chakra, I'm not speaking my truth. Oh, I've got to learn to be able to voice my opinions a bit more. So it's having those small practical tips on the back of your mind that if you read the book, you better have all those amazing tips to be able to bring yourself back into alignment when you feel out of sorts. Brilliant and well said. Can we please give a round of applause to our wonderful uh, panellists and everything? I just want to say a big thank you. And if you are watching this, check out for the link and make sure you buy the book right now. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.